What's up, people? It's your girl, Adola. First of all, happy Valentine's Day, my people. I love you guys. And I'm so sorry, by the way, my YouTube family have been accused of not being kind to my YouTube family because I announced our Valentine's sales on Instagram and Facebook. I didn't announce on YouTube. A lot of people keyed into that 20% of who were like, what were we thinking, giving our 20%? So because of YouTube family, if you're yet to key into that, please, we are extending it till the 16th instead of the 14th which is today i mean look at me check me out i am feeling myself today i did this hairstyle this twist out with adults nothing else just adults guys the spray and the butter this is actually a week old twist that i just took out and i didn't actually fluff it out you know i was supposed to separate it but i was just like <laughs> who cares it looks good like that so get yourself some adults product if you're yet to so guys hmm, real quick nigerian election is 11 days so 11 hey it's only 11 days away and it's been so hard to keep up with the dramas but real quick this means that in 11 days we'll be making a decision that would affect every aspect of our lives for the next four years when it comes to our economy when it comes to job creation when it comes to our infrastructure our roads whether or not they will be constructed whether or not we have stable electricity whether or not people will have to continue to depend on stomach infrastructure we're about to make that decision in 11 days it is a very very important election so please make sure that you vote if you have registered and and please make sure that you vote for whoever you know will give us this change that we are all yearning for please do not vote based on stomach infrastructure somebody giving you some change it won't do you for the next four years so like i said there's been a lot of drama with this election and it's been so hard to keep up with all the dramas i can assure you your excellency kogi said we are going to deliver the highest percentage in terms of vote to the coffers not today okay not today satan please like seriously you compare our percentage relative to lagos and to kano we are going to beat every country every state in this coming general election i know though what is your your problem uncle but i am again what do you look at this uncle fat it's all right you you cannot even compare your population with lagos or kano say population but you are telling us that you will deliver more votes than lagos and kano for tinubu you will be doing mouth i swear you in case you are watching he's just lying ah, he's lying to your face eh am i again what do you know ah at the age of 47 this man is the youngest governor in nigeria and when you see what young people are doing around the world ah baba in finland in ireland in new zealand you have to wonder when will our own responsible young people change the narrative not just in nigeria by the way all my african people move closer in fact i have your time today but i do you guys see what the president of el salvador is doing benny naib bukele the man was 37 37 when he became president in 2019 we don't even look at people in their 30s in some parts of africa people in their 40s like in nigeria where i'm from forgetting that this is when you have the physical strength to make real changes remember my video about thomas sankara of burkina faso ah baba may he so rest in peace we need more people like him in africa even though their population is only 6.3 million el salvador had a terrible terrible reputation of gangs and violence ms starting gang you guys know them right Benny. but when bukele came into power in 2019 the first thing he did was to fire five supreme court judges well his party did and they also fired the attorney general they said that all these old men are corrupt and he started cracking down on gang members but you know as expected the gang members retaliated they went on a killing spree just to make a statement to the president that they are not afraid of him so of course he also doubled down on his crackdown arresting thousands of gang members in fact within like 10 days they arrested 6,000 members he's using both the soldiers and the police to hunt down gang members they just completed another big prison by the way in El Salvador just so that they could arrest more people. Este centro de confinamiento del terrorismo área de construcción son 33 manzanas aproximadamente y también eh, decirle que este se constituiría como la cárcel más grande de toda América. Es de que aquí van a haber fábricas en las cuales ellos van a estar trabajando a diario porque estos tipos no han venido a descansar y que van a estar y que crean que van a estar en hoteles señor presidente. 
que todo ese trabajo produzca algo para la sociedad. And of course, he's been criticized because, first of all, detainees are not being allowed access to a legal defense. And what happens if the person that they arrested is innocent? You know, I don't see how they will not arrest some innocent people as they are arresting a lot of people. Also, the right to gather in groups larger than two was suspended while the arrest was going on. And then the gang members who are minors are being tried as adults. So he's been criticized for these things. So some people are saying that this is unconstitutional. But then all statistics, even the ones from the critics, all statistics talk about how the country is so much safer now than before he became president. Homicide went down drastically from like 20 a day reported to about three a day. El Salvador's notoriously high murder rate has dropped dramatically. There was an average of 18 murders a day. Now it's just three. Pensábamos que él iba a ser el, el hombre más diferente que todo. Hay más libertad, pues. porque hoy hay más libertad. No como antes que si uno salía. ¿Es seguro caminar por aquí? Sí, sí, sí. No hay problemas. No hay problemas. Ok, perfecto. Claro. That for most of the last 30 years has been the most dangerous country in the world. And we're just walking around. And you know what that means, guys? Security encourages tourism. In fact, a lot of people in El Salvador are making videos telling people you can come for vacation. It also attracts foreign investors to create more jobs. In fact, a lot of people went back and talked about how it's so much safer now to be outside, even at night. Of course, the US and other countries have criticized him, especially when the judges were fired. But he says that getting rid of gang members is what he promised, and that's exactly what he's doing. A ver cuánto tiempo duran sus homeboys allá adentro. Les juro por Dios que no comen un arroz. Y vamos a ver cuánto tiempo duran. Y no me importa lo que digan los organismos internacionales, que vengan a proteger a nuestra gente, que vengan a llevarse a sus pandilleros, si tanto los quieren, se los entregamos todos al dos por uno. The United States has condemned scenes like these, but the government is in no mood to be lectured by the Americans. It's also good to note that they didn't forget the role of the U.S. in the violence and the instability that they've been facing for decades. In the name of fighting communism, the U.S. poured billions of dollars into a 12-year civil war here during the 80s and 90s. The country is still recovering. And as a lot of you know, so many people migrate from El Salvador to the U.S. because it's not far from the U.S. And he's telling the U.S. that, well, what I'm doing is helping people feel safer in my country so they don't have to migrate to the U.S. So critics of the U.S. are saying that the U.S. should be happy with what he's doing because it's limiting the number of illegal migrants that will come into the U.S. from El Salvador. Let me know what you guys think about that. Also, I need to play this video for you guys. This was his response to Spain. Spain is also one of the countries that had been criticizing him. They got their independence from Spain, by the way. No dieron una independencia. Vaya, aquí está. Usted ahora en este va a ser país. No colonia, no protectorado. No. Aquí va a ser país. Es porque ustedes construyeron su país. Pero ustedes deben dejar que nosotros construyamos el nuestro. Porque es bien difícil si ustedes nos quieren amarrar a un pasado que ustedes saben que no ha sido bueno para nosotros. Wow. As in, wow, for you. Nosotros no, no íbamos a cambiar con el, la misma asamblea, no íbamos a cambiar con los mismos magistrados, con el mismo fiscal. Va a pasar lo mismo. Déjenos que nos desarrollemos, cumpliendo la ley, respetando a la gente. Y algún día no vamos a ser nunca como Canadá porque no tenemos ese territorio, pero vamos a ser en chiquito como Canadá. Y nuestra gente va a ser feliz. Los buenos amigos dejan que el amigo se, se, se desarrolle también. I admire how he doesn't suck up to anyone as in. No solo. Es decir, nosotros no queremos que ustedes no den de comer siempre. Gracias, pues. Pero nosotros queremos también poder comprar nuestra comida. No lo que nos den de vez en cuando para que comamos un poquito. I don't think 
that he should be a dictator that is not what i'm saying please do not get me wrong i think that whatever he's doing he should still operate according to the law but everybody is testifying to the result of what he's doing in terms of making the country feel safer and once again this man is only 41 but between 2019 and now he has drastically changed the reputation of his country. People are no longer looking at El Salvador as that country that is not safe or that country filled with gang members. Africa has mostly young population. There are so many people in their 30s, so many people in their 40s that are not just speaking out but are actually making changes in their own little corner. But for some reason, it's like we dismiss young people in different parts of Africa. In Nigeria, for example, we say they don't have experience. I think that we need to learn from what is going on in El Salvador. I think that a lot of young people, if given the opportunity, they will make some drastic changes that we desperately need. I think we too can get it right. Let me know what you guys think about that. Also, I've seen some critics online saying that, well, what he's doing in El Salvador is the same thing that Paul Kagame is trying to do in Rwanda. I disagree because, you know, he's not arresting opposition members. He's not arresting anybody that speaks out against him there's freedom of expression in el salvador you can protest which is not the case in rwanda el salvador is not a country where you can't speak out against the president also what he is doing is trying to make his country safer he's not overstaying his time limit and he's not acting like he's the only one that can do the job so i, I disagree i don't think it's the same let me know what you guys think about that but before i let you go guys a few announcements i apologize that we can no longer ship to canada because we found out that when people get their packages in canada the canadian customs is also charging them extra money to collect their package so and they've already paid for shipping we're like no that's not fair so we just wait until we have distributors in canada and then you can order directly from them please do not forget to call help me work out to help you get Get food to the doorsteps of your loved ones during this time of naira scarcity in nigeria so guys let me know what you think about what's happening in el salvador do not forget to click the thumbs up button if you're yet to so that more people can see this video all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook Twitter, and instagram and if you're yet to subscribe to my channel i'm watching you on plasma tv press the subscribe button and the bell button and until next time i'll see you later peace out